Are you getting ready for the Santa cat? Are you being good? Are you? Yes, I think so. Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So this week I was planning on going back to do some more prepping videos. And then I thought, you know what? It's Christmas. Let's just make this a fun, fun week. So today I'm going to teach you how you can identify the age of a piece of vintage clothing. So stay tuned. So you may notice my lovely pile <laughs> of clothing back behind me here. So what I've done is I've pulled out some of my vintage clothing and I'm going to share with you some of my treasured pieces and how I approximately date them. So one of the things that often happens when you go to, let's say a, a Goodwill or a thrift store, they may have some clothing that looks to be vintage, but of course there's no data about it. There's no information. So sometimes you end up purchasing something that looks vintage, which is fine, but really isn't. So you wanna make sure you're not paying up for it if you're shopping in a store like an antique store or a collectible store. So what is the number one way I tell? It has to do with the zipper on the garment. So clothing made 1963 or earlier had metal zippers. So if the zipper on your garment is plastic or nylon, you know it has to be after 1963. And let me share this with you guys. I have all types of vintage clothing. I have everything from some 80s back to what I think might be some 40s and then I have a lot of reproduction as well. I go more for style and wearability than I am just truly after that authentic vintage um, piece of clothing because that can get kind of pricey, number one. And also, if you're wearing something, let's say from the 1950s, you know, that, that garment's 70 years old. So durability, fading, um, just disintegration of fabric, moth holes, all of those things can be problematic. So. Um, also, if the zipper is on the side, and I have to tell you, I hate a side zipper. Whoever like invented that, I hate it. And even modern clothing, some of the nicer modern clothing, like Grace Karen does uh, reproduction vintage clothing, so they have the zipper on the side. I just think it's very difficult to get up and down. But if you have a metal zipper and it's on the side, then you're going to know it's probably um, 50s to very early 60s or perhaps even before. Number two, handmade. You've all seen a couple of my vintage aprons and there was a huge movement in the 50s and 60s to make your own clothes at home. First and foremost, it was a lot less expensive back then to create your own clothing than to purchase it. That all changed by the 80s when the whole Asian market started producing a lot of clothing for less. So really we're talking about 50s to the 70s. So in 1955, 52 million U.S. women were creating their own clothing at home. This increased from 60 to 68 by 50 percent. So that would be gosh, like 75 million people that were creating their own clothing at home. I started sewing in 1973, and I sewed clear up until the 80s <laughs> very heavily, and that's when fabrics began to really increase in price. Patterns really began to increase in price, and it was indeed, with some metal flankies, cheaper to go purchase off the rack. Come here. You want to say hi to the peoples? No? Okay. <laughs> Apologize, guys. Cat problems. Okay, number three, the garment care label. I can't tell you how many times I have searched and searched and turned a garment inside out, trying to determine the date, to realize that I don't even know what it's made of. And that is because... The Federal Trade Commission did not require garment care labels until 1971. 
Now, I want to say a little caveat here. How many of you have ever, like, put on a new shirt and there's a tag in it and it's, like, biting you and you rip that thing out? <laughs> Pronto. You know, and a lot of companies, especially t-shirts, now just print everything right on the material. But if you if you can see other factors, like I just shared with you, the zipper, the construction, etc., and there's no garment care label, it's prior to 1971. Number four, does it say blank company name of California? Now, I do not have any of California clothing, but I'm clear over on the east side of the United States, so it probably is much more plentiful on the west coast. So from the 30s to the 70s, styles for women particularly, well, and men too, were very influenced by the Hollywood starlets. So companies started naming their company, you know, Clark of California, so that it would inspire people to think, oh, this is what the starlets wear. And then that kind of fell out of favor by 1980. And so if you have a garment that says brand name of California, you know that that garment is older than 1980. So the fifth way to help you date possible vintage clothing is made in Hawaii labels. So a lot of times the label will list a Hawaiian city or an island as the origin of the product. And I have one I'm gonna show you. So that was generally made between the 30s and the 60s. It became very popular when starlets started wearing Hawaiian outfits. I'm sure you've all seen some of the old movies, some of my favorites, and even more so after Hawaii became a state in 1959. The sixth way, <laughs> how come I always end up talking about how my size, I don't know, it is sizing. So um, there was no size on a garment that was made prior to 1958. Let me say this, there was no size requirement in a garment made prior to 1958. Some you will find. Um, I've talked before about vanity sizing. So here's, here's a really good rule of thumb. If it's six numbers bigger than your regular size, ladies, it was probably made in the 60s and if it's four numbers bigger and it fits than your regular size, it was probably between 60 and 84. So for sake of argument, um, let's say I wear a size 10. I find vintage clothing fits me best at a size 18 and here's why. Because that fabric is so old, I don't want to cause strain. I do have broad shoulders. I have a larger chest. So I don't want to cause seams to tear, etc. So that is six plus two. <laughs> I really find it fits me best. So I don't hold to that as a hard and fast rule, but that is how vanity sizing has changed throughout the years. Um, number seven, designer tags. And I have a really cool vintage find that I just got this week junkie that I'm gonna share with you. So vintage fashion is, is hard to determine sometimes. And again, sometimes labels wear out, they fade, they're cut out. But usually the designer labels are left in from a standpoint of prestige. There is actually online, guys, a vintage fashion label resource guide. So whether it's a union tag, and I'm gonna show you that, or just the layout of that designer tag, you can go online, look up the tag, find the one that most resembles what you have, and you can come up with a date, which I think is so cool. It's one of my favorite things to do. And then finally, does it say at home or hostess wear? So in the 60s and 70s, women sort of moved away from always being dressed up and they started to have some at home casual wear. 
So if the tag actually says, and I don't have an example of it, at home or hostess wear, it was probably made in either the 60s or early to mid 70s. So who knew all that, right? So hold on a minute. I am going to show you some of my favorite vintage pieces. Some are quite simple and talk about where I found them, where you can find vintage clothing if you're interested, and how I date it. Stay tuned. All right, before we start into the clothing, sorry guys, Frankie has this thing. Oh goodness, I just popped my camera off the tripod from my little snowman and he does not like them. So he thinks he has to oh, snap that on, um, tip them over. <laughs> He's actually been really, really good. Um, he's only knocked the tray over once, which I think is like minor. <laughs> but um, there's a few things he has not left alone. But you know what? He's such a sweet baby. I can't be mad at him. So first and foremost, where do I find vintage clothing? Guys, I find it everywhere. It is still relatively plentiful. And I will say... I'm seeing a lot of vintage 80s. Now, I love the 80s because the 80s, we had the big hair. <laughs> and one day, guys, one day, I will not, like, um, straighten my hair. And I will show you that I can put Farrah Fawcett to shame because I have a lot of hair and it's big. <laughs> so, 80s is very, very popular, but that's not my jam. My jam is more 50s and 60s. I do like some of the more classic 80s that look a lot like the 30s and 40s. So where do I find it? Sorry, I got sidetracked. One of the absolute best places to find it, go to a thrift store or a Goodwill. Now I know Goodwill has increased their prices, but where can you find a vintage dress for four or five bucks? Uh, yeah, nowhere on eBay, let me <laughs> share that. So remember, you need to be in the mood. Start at the very large size end because if it does have a size tag, which um, would be 1958 or after, the number is going to be much larger. So you will find your size 18 in the size 18s. But when you pick up the garment, it will look like something that would fit me. So you need to go through all the racks, all the racks. Also, if you get to know the folks at your thrift store, I have a very small thrift store here in town. They know what I like and they will let me know if they have something really cool. That's always a good thing. So chat up those people. The second place is eBay. And guys, read the listing very, very carefully. Um, you're rolling the dice. You can't try it on. It may fit, it may not. I'm going to show you something that I purchased off eBay that has an issue. And guys, I still wear it because it's pajamas and I don't care. <laughs> but um, you can find some good deals. So instead of five whatever you find at the Goodwill, you're going to pay more like probably around 20. And don't forget to factor in shipping. Uh, another place you can find some things on Etsy. I find Etsy to really be the higher end, much much more so than eBay. Um, antique stores, you can find some good deals, guys. Um, especially if you go into a booth situation where clothing isn't their mainstay. Maybe they have a few pieces of clothing and lots of, say, kitchenalia, you know, so they're not super invested on the clothing side. You can find some good deals, and I'm going to share one with you I found this week. I got two really cool new finds from Junking. So antique stores are a good place to look. And then also don't forget about, you know, places like Facebook Marketplace. Sometimes people are clearing out garage sales. It's the middle of winter here. Nobody's having a garage sale. Estate sales, also a very good place. So you just have to keep your eye open. I am always looking for clothes and uh, guys I don't need clothes but I love clothes so that is my one weakness in my budget um changing topics I usually do the no spend January with the supply chain issues we're having this year and with 
people really wanting to prep. I don't think it's appropriate for us to do a no spend January because I think a lot of us, myself included, are not gonna be willing to participate because we're getting things as we can source them. So we'll do some frugal uh, videos. We'll do some uh, cooking of some depression era meals. So we're, we're gonna have a lot of fun in January, but we're not gonna have no spend January. Okay, I can just chat and chat and chat. Guys, I'm so excited to show you some of my vintage stuff. All right, so this was what they call new old stock. And I'm gonna hold up the little tag. So it is the three-in-one pajama trio, pajama set by Carol. And it has long pants, short pants, and a shirt. And it says for sleep or leisure lounging. So if you think back, um, to, to what I said about the leisure wear. Well, okay, that might date it to the 60s and 70s, but this has no care label. So this is definitely 60s. However, and this is what you have to be careful about. I didn't pay a whole lot for this. I believe I paid $11 for this set. Um, so you can tell by the fabric print that they're older. The pants are huge, <laughs> but the shirt fits. And let me just show you and see if, you, if the camera will pick it up. Okay, see the yellow stripe? So this was on a fold line, and even though it was in the original packaging, um, it has some discoloration. So when I'm washing vintage wear, I um, usually do it by hand, I use a four delicates type uh, soap solution. This, because it is 100% cotton, I put in the washing machine with OxyClean, it did not come out. I did not dry it, so I'm hoping. It's a very sturdy fabric. I think I can use some chlorine bleach on it um, and it would be color fast. So that's just something you need to note. So if this was a dress, I'm not gonna wear a dress with a big discolored stripe but um, nobody but Frankie sees me in my pajamas, so we're good on that. All right, second piece of new old stock. Guys, how cool is this dress? Has a little matching belt. This was also in its original packaging. Look at this, like how 60s is that? So here's two easy ways to hang wrinkles away. So. One, hang dress in a steamy room. Two, hang dress in where the air circulates freely. So, very, very um, 60s to 70s looking, but it has a care tag and a size. So it has to be 71 or after, and the zipper is plastic. So that tells me it's probably very early 70s. This, to look at the detail on the pockets. It's super cute on. I know it looks a little shapeless on the hanger. All right, so those both were purchased from eBay really, really inexpensively. Okay, so this is really cool, guys. Take a look at this. So it is a maxi dress like um kind of an asian closure but you see what it says here it's by made in hawaii and it's definitely 100 percent polyester and it does have hair instructions so i know that this was made in the 70s because my mom and dad went to hawaii in uh 78 and for their anniversary or was it 75? Maybe 75. And so um, this was what my mom purchased. I can actually wear the shirt, the dress. I will never be able to wear <laughs> because it's itty bitty. But because it's a set and so pretty, I and my mom's not wearing it, I took it. So probably my two favorites that are true vintage. You've all seen me wear this in the 60s video. And I also have this beauty, which is sleeveless, has the little rhinestone detail. These were made after 1958. So I'm gonna guess they're both late 50s. How did I date them? 
Um, they don't have any care tag, but they both have sizes. And they do have the metal zipper. And one is, no, they're both center back. But these are uh, a rayonish material. This one is fully lined. I did purchase this off eBay. This I found at a thrift store. So these are two of my dressy dresses, but I just love the cut and the fit. And yes, they are both size 18. All right. So another fun one. This was a find this week. How pretty is this little blue 50s looking sweater? So this is what you find a lot, guys. Like, what is left of the tag here? So it says, um, all Orlan acrylic, park and stork. So no size. Um, just by the construction and the style, I'm going to say this is probably a true 50s. This is what it was advertised at. I paid $12 for the sweater. It is in mint condition. All of the beading is there. And you'll also notice it has the little round buttons. So I'm excited to have this to wear. All right, the one I'm wearing. I actually purchased this off eBay. It is styled very similar to the one I just showed you. It is definitely 50s and has, I don't know if I can show you guys, has a designer tag, no care instructions, uh, but it does have a size. So I don't think size is as specific dating because some companies did put it on, but you can tell this has those little round buttons that were very popular in the 50s as well. So my very favorite find this week, guys. I'm going to model it for you. <laughs> so even being a hater of a winter coat, yeah. I could not pass this up. Please excuse the tag. Obviously I haven't worn that it yet. So this, I am not a fan of modern day fur, but once the animal has already been used for a vintage garment, it's better for it to have a second life than to go into the landfill. So I paid, wait for it, $38 for this coat. Now, it needs a lot of love. <laughs> but let me show you a little bit about this coat and how I dated it. Wait for it, wait for it. Sorry guys, oh, I'm fettle fingers this morning. Okay, so there is a tag here. Let me come closer. I'm sorry about the messages, guys. And it says Stevis, Stevenson, no, Stevens Forstman. And it, this, label helped me to go on an adventure. So they were actually a maker of woolen yarns and fabric and they didn't produce the actual clothing but they were known for such high quality fabric that their label was displayed right alongside the makers or the manufacturers of the actual piece of clothing's label. Uh, they were formed in 1904 and today they're called Victor Fortsman. So they've gone through a couple changes of um, ownership, shall we say. The collar is mink and I loved the coat. So, and I thought for $38, oh my gosh, you know, the, co the collar is detachable. The wool is in excellent shape, but guys, here's what I mean that it needs a lot of love. So these are the underarm seams and they have totally split out the lining and it is that way on both sides and it's also come loose in the middle right here as you can see so i'm very thankful that i can sew it's also missing it had three buttons and there's only two of them left so what i plan to do one's in the pocket is sew the second one on and put a very decorative one here so it will still look very authentic. But I was puzzled because I have not been able to find any sort of maker's label. But what I did find, 
hey, I can actually do this, is the union label. So it's the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. You can go out and look up these tags based on the style and what's on the back of it, and it will tell you how old the garment is. And the best I can tell, this actually dates it to 1963 by the union label. Um, not positive that's accurate, but at any rate, you know, I'm saving something that is 60 plus years old. And I think it would be, it would be a challenge, but I think it's even repairable. Um, you could actually remove the lining, but look at this fabric, guys. It's like a silk that is layered with a really nice warm woven material. And because the lining is not attached inside, very, very easy. And you can see, gosh, there's a lot of thread here. It'll be very easy to repair it and restore it back to life. And then I can have it dry clean. Um, I'm not opposed to wearing vintage fur. As I said, I, I do not wear modern fur. Uh, I like faux fur, <laughs> but I had a lot of fun doing the research on that coat. And there was an older gentleman behind me, bless his heart. And he, he was actually a vendor and he had his little walker and he was really chatty. And um, he knew a lot of, it wasn't his booth, but he knew a lot about the coat. And he said, you're getting a $6,000 coat for $38. Okay, I don't think it's a $6,000 coat. Some of them of that time period also had the fur around the cuffs. I'm glad that it doesn't. Um, the collar is also hand sewn in so I could remove it. No problem if I decide I don't wanna wear it. So I just wanted to share that little fun story with you. I had such a good time this week just doing a little junking as I call it. I did not find anything at Goodwill and the sweater and the coat were my finds at the Springfield Antique Center in Springfield, Ohio, which is a little dry for me, but it's always a fun day. So I hope you've enjoyed today's just for fun video. And do you have any vintage clothing? Drop me a comment below. Do you have trouble dating it? What's the oldest piece of clothing that you own that maybe was something gifted to you from a friend, family member, grandma, mom? I'd love to hear more about it and I'd love to see it. If you'd like to email me any pictures, because I can always admire <laughs> your clothing, um, send me an email at sweethoneybath at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you anytime. I hope you all are getting ready for Christmas. I know I have like so much to do and I'm sitting here making a video that I should have made yesterday, but that's okay. I always want to have good content. If you have not watched my live from early, early this morning, 6.15 this morning, please take a moment. It's only like a five minute video to go over and learn about a tragedy that happened to a YouTuber. She lost her entire mobile home, all of her possessions. Um, it's Jackie over at Bless Beyond Measure. Go over, show her channel some love, subscribe, watch her videos. She is an amazing crafter, guys. And even if you're not interested in crafts, you're going to love her. Her enthusiasm is so contagious. And I know how much that would bless her. And she also has a link, and I put a link in my live to her PayPal. If you feel thus inclined and want to donate, please do so. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I will see you all a little bit later this week. Take care.